<laughs> for the most part, like you can actually, if you're if you're um, pressed for time, which most people are, the rule of thumb is about thirty seconds on each body part, right? So you could even, if you wanted to, like sometimes what I'll do is I'll set the clock up if I'm doing my own thing, and I'll set it at thirty second intervals just to like keep me flowing through it. But I always like to start with foot. And I know like, a lot of people, a lot of runners, have issues with myofascial release. I mean that with um, plantar fasciitis. So as you're, you can apply as much pressure as you want. Give time again. Probably need this. You can apply as much pressure as you want, or as, as little pressure as little pressure as you want on your foot. You can really make it painful, and it's not going to be comfortable. Some uh, fascial release is, is, is actually pretty painful. And the rule is that the more you feel it, the more it hurts, the more you actually need it. Okay, so, and actually find spots on your foot. And as, you, as you're moving, as you're rolling this over your foot, you can wiggle the toes a little bit, go to the outside, go down towards the heel. Okay, and just find, try to find every spot on your foot. Up by the balls of your feet. Don't roll over the bony structures though, just try to keep it on the soft tissue the whole time. This makes, makes a huge difference. If you do this before you run, it's going to make a huge difference in how you feel when you're running. I was always having foot problems until I started doing this, this kind of stuff. But the whole idea is to kind of release the fast. I actually gave you handouts for you guys, so I didn't bring them out. Um, the whole idea is every is to release it. There's there's fascia that covers every muscle cell in your body. Okay, it's like the outer covering of the muscle cell. What happens to that fascia is it kind of it kind of gets like stuck to itself, stuck to its kind of binds. So this is to, to release all that that binding and to help the muscle move more efficiently, which actually helps you, the, the joints light up better and keeps everything more efficient in your body, helps you move better. So the better, the, the better your fascia is, the better you'll be able to move your body the more efficiently. Okay? So as you move up the body, right, I like to use the, the lacrosse ball also on the smaller muscle groups in the lower leg. So the Achilles, up calf, soleus, perineal muscles, which are on the outside. Right? So if you don't mind getting on the floor, just kind of start at the Achilles. Like the soleus is the is the lower calf muscle. And as you're rolling out, the, the secret to the, to the foam rolling and to the self fascia release is to move the joint as you're doing it. Don't just roll your body out. So if I'm sitting on the soleus here, right, I'm going to point flex my foot, right? I'm going to come up the calf, I'm going to point flex my foot, right? Just let it sink in there. You might have to breathe through it a little bit, right? So move your foot, move the actual joint when you're rolling out. Don't just roll out. If you're just rolling out over the muscle without moving the actual joint itself, you're not getting an effective myofascial release. You're, you're not doing what you know what you should be doing. It's, you're actually just kind of wasting your time. So also get to the outside with the perineal muscle is kind of kind of sensitive. And again, you want to also move move the foot in and out, right? As you're rolling out those, and this might be a little awkward at first when you're doing it. But as the more you do this, the more natural it's going to feel to you. So it might feel a little bit awkward when you're doing this kind of stuff, right? So I'm going to actually going to go through this kind of quickly with you. And I'm not going to, you know, I just want to get as much done as possible without like staying on one body part too long. But then you can also kind of put it between your calf and your hamstring, right? Kind of pull it with your with your arms, and now from here. Point flex, right? The upper calf. Hamstring tendon, calf. Okay? Point flex, so like squeeze, and you can apply as much pressure as you want there. Right? Plantar flex source. You can even move the ball to, on different angles. You can move it to the outside, right? The medial side, the inside. But you always want to move, you always want to get, you always want to move the foot around. You don't want to just sit there with it. You always want to move the joint. Okay? That makes a huge difference. It's kind of getting in deeper, right? 
So from there, I mean, you can use this basically on, on everything, right? Um, I'm not gonna torture you guys right now with the, the whole piriformis thing, but as you move up the body, like then for the larger muscle groups, you grab the roller, right? And then you're gonna, I like to start just by sitting on it. And you'll come up with your own routine. You'll find, you'll find things that you actually have to work on. Right? Because you can spend hours just rolling out body parts. Right? But you're going to find the things that you need the most, and you're going to come up with your own routine. So a lot of times I just like to start just by rocking back and forth on the roller, just kind of getting used to being on it. I got a lot of high school kids that kind of, they're like spazzing, they fall off a bit and stuff. <laughs> so, right? Yes. It's my kid. My school is high school kids stuff, so he knows. And from there, right, cross the ankle, I, you know, whatever ankle, I'll go left ankle over right knee, and then just kind of place the left hand behind you, and then lean to that side. So, little glute roll at the same time, get that stretch in the hip. Right? It cares, right? You need this. And then, yeah, when you like that, right, that means you need it. Yeah. That's when you got to breathe, too. Right? Or just sit, just breathe through it if it's... And just let it sit on that spot and breathe through it, right? Find those little hot spots, just kind of hold them on there, right? Again, you don't have to sit there all day. You can sit there for as long as you want, but the good rule of thumb is 30 seconds. If you don't, you know, if you, if you press for time, you can stay there longer if you want, and then move to the other side, right? Again, you may need some areas more than other areas. And the whole idea here is always start with the with this with the, with the, the foam rolling, the modification release, and then after that we move on to our mobility work. So now what you're doing is you're kind of breaking everything up, and it's going to make you more move more efficiently. And then you're going to do your mobility work, and it'll be a lot easier for you to do the mobility work after you do this stuff. Okay, from there we're just actually just going to move on to your side, onto your hip. Right? I like to put the leg behind. So. This one, to start up, start up by the hip. And now the whole idea is slow. You want to, when you roll out a muscle, you do it slowly. Okay, slow. And just let that muscle sink right into the roller. Now, again, you got to move the leg. You guys are not going to like me for this one, but you got to move your leg when you're rolling. So as you're rolling up and down, you want to move the joint and do it slowly. Right, move the joint. So you're going from the hip up to the knee, almost right, right before you get to the to the bone. You're staying on that soft tissue the whole time. So it's slow, control, roll, let the muscles sink into it, and bend like I'm doing. And it's gonna hurt. The more you do this, the less it's gonna hurt you. Okay. So don't just like say, ah, I'm not going to do that because it hurts. You try to work through it, and eventually it's not going to hurt you. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, it does. That's why a lot of people don't like to do this because it hurts. Breathe. Right. Then, the other, then you know, of course, to the other side. And you're usually going to have one side that's going to that's going to hurt more than the other side. Right. So again, bend. Right. Move. Move the joint. Up and down slowly, slowly. All right. I'm gonna grab those handouts for you guys. I'm gonna grab some stuff. Get on the edge of the roller, right? So if I'm rolling on my right leg, you're gonna have your left, you're gonna be right on the edge with your left leg 
off to the side so it doesn't get in the way. Right? So you now need to get start with the, with the roller right on top of your knee. And now again, slowly, you can use your hands. Now, watch, I'm going to bend, I'm going to straighten. I'm going to bend, I'm going to straighten. And as I'm doing that, I'm slowly working up towards the hip. I'm going to bend, I'm going to straighten. Bend, straighten it out. So you're kind of stretching that quad at the same time you roll it. So straighten it, bend it. Straighten it, bend it. Work up towards the hip. Slowly, yeah. And it hurts. And breathe. Don't hold your breath. Breathe through that. And then back up, same thing. Now, when you get good, right, you can actually roll. See how I'm like, changing the position of my leg? So you can, as you're doing this, you can now you can go to the side, you can roll to your hip, you can roll to the adductor, it's the inside of your leg. So you can actually move around a lot. So I'm going from like the IT band, quad, now adductor. So I'm actually rolling my leg, I'm kind of wrapping it around and rolling. So this is the next level stuff. Right? So that's the next level. See, so I'm just kind of rolling it. Kind of wrapping around that muscle. See that? Yeah, that's next level. Yeah. But as you, I'm telling you, as you as you do this, you do this every day. I do this every single day, except for maybe Sunday. Maybe Saturday. Nah, Saturday, Sunday, I think. But you just get used to doing it. Right? And you come up with your feel like chest, right? But you come up with your own little, and then you, you know you kind of sit on the act up here, right? That's inside of your leg. Those are those inner thigh muscles. You can roll out the adductor. And again, bend the knee, move the joint, rotate the hip. All right? Move it around. Find those spots that hurt. Let them sit there and just kind of let them fester. And just bend, extend, fester. It comes to fester. All right? And then, of course, you do the other side. Then you can actually go from here, kind of just roll on to the other side. Like that, right? Now you're on the other. You can do the same exact thing. You go quad, adductor, right? Let the leg roll around, bend, flex, extend. And this actually, you know, this takes a little bit out of you too. It's, it's not it's not easy. I breathe. Yeah, you break a sweat doing this. Right? And I always remember, use movement. Use movement. Bend. Bend the knee. Okay? Find different angles. Use movement. This too much. Yeah. I think you have yoga. It's amazing. It's always like my feet are Yeah. That also could be like that. You low on, you know, magnesium. Yeah. All right, so now let's get off. Let's get off the quads. Let's move to the back. All right, move to the back. A couple things you got to do here with the back. Again, you see people just kind of rolling their back out, right? So, a couple things. Grab your shoulders. You got to keep your hips up. Again, slowly along from the lower back up to your shoulder. Now you can also, as you're pulling your back, you can lean to the, you can lean to the left side, you can lean to the right side, you can breathe. And after a while, you have your, your arms crossed, you can let go of your shoulders. And now you're, now you're going to roll with arm movement, right? So by, by that, I mean roll and press at the same time. So if you're, as if you're pressing dumbbells or a barbell over your head as you're rolling. So you're going to roll and press, right, so you're hitting all those upper back muscles. Then you can, you know, you can let it sit on the, on the mid-back and continue to press, and then you're gonna roll with some arm circles, right, so roll with arm circles. It's like walking and chewing gum at the same time, but, and then you can reverse it, so you can roll arm circle one way, and then roll arm circle the other way. Right, and now we're gonna roll with like some shoulder flexion and extension, right? Just like this. 
Roll with some flexion and extension. So you always want to always want to move the arms when you're rolling. First, I'll show you how to floor. Right, tricep and the lats at the same time. So roll the lats all the way up to the tricep. Right? So you can also do that just to show you if you have a bench too, you can do that off the bench. You don't have to do it off the floor. You can also. So if you have a bench, just to show you another option, a lot of times this is a lot easier to, to maneuver than on the floor. Right? Same thing with the with the pack. Pack muscle. Right? You can also do the pack muscle off the bench. You down one that pack muscle with the roller. I'm going to show you how to do it with the lacrosse ball. Yeah. Yeah, the last good one. That's an important muscle. Huge stabilizer. All right, guys. Are you serving the kilo? No. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, someone. All right, so come on up for a sec. You can get up. Now, if you want to pinpoint the, the, the pack, the, you know, the upper body a little bit more, we use, I usually like to use the rack or this. Um, this pole here, or even the edge of the of the of the wall. Get it right between the shoulder and the pack, right on the soft tissue. You can lean into it. And then again, use movement. Do some presses. Right? Do some flexion extension, abduction, adduction, do some internal, external rotation. You don't right. have a ball and you can use a lawn dart. Lawn dart works, yes. You can use the edge to take out edge of the wall. You can use the rack, right? So you can put the ball on the rack here too. Right? Use movement in the arm. Oh yeah. Lawn dart. Right? Tommy J? This is endless the stuff you can do, really. You can also, I tell my baseball players, because they're, they're always jacked up. I have them out in the dugout with baseballs doing that stuff. The old baseballs. But I do some presses, right? Get full extension of the arm. Are you doing those? And also try this or try reaching up and reaching back and touching your shoulder blade. Right? So kind of get it in there. Reach up and around and back. Yeah, George Jam looks good, right? If you're at home. A little bit of this stuff goes a long way. You can also, right, track, scapula. Now watch this one. If you get, to, a lot of people have issues with their with the trap. Get the right kind of at the base of the neck. Get it up in there, and you can turn, do some rotation of the head. Right, 
That's always a good one. So again, you can do that on that on the edge. Nice. You can do that against it, against the wall. You can do it on the pole. You can also get on the wall with the ball on the inside of your scapula, right? Or on the upper trap. And do some presses, right? So, yeah, right there. Yep. Just find different spots. So, here's another one, right? Sometimes get it up on the inside of the scap, lean into it, and do, the, do some arm movement there. Do some presses, different arm movements, all right? There you go. That works out. You move your head, right? <laughs> Neck rotation, head rotation. Hmm, let's see here. You can also do that same stuff off the bench, too, right? You can also do that same stuff. You can also, I'm going to show you. That. One of the most important ones that I think, right? So right now I'm just kind of going, going over the, the ones, the basic ones that I think would, would be best for, for most people. The, the, one of the best ones I've seen, I learned from this guy, um, Dean Somerset. He's like a, like a, um, what they, he's a very smart guy. He's just a smart Canadian. It's like one of those uh, mobility experts. So the, the psoas muscle, right? Yeah, most people are tight in hips, which can cause a lot of, a lot of back issues. But it's a, it's a culprit for, for most people who are, you know, they sit down a lot, they drive, they sit in the car a lot. Um, tight hips, right? Tight psoas muscle. So with the kettlebell, with the light kettlebell and the lacrosse ball. Just sit on the bench, right? Get the ball right on the inside. So here's your, your, your hip bone, right? So you're gonna get the ball right on the inside, right on the soft tissue. You're gonna place the kettlebell on the on the ball. You're gonna lie back. Right? You can just let that sink in there. You can breathe, and you're just gonna find different spots in there. And at the same time, you can start, now you're going to move the leg up and down. Right, that's that so as release. You can also do the same thing with a foam roller on the bench. Like if you use the corner of the roller on the bench and you lie down on it. So a smaller roller would probably work better, but that roller right in there too. So you guys. Should try that. All right, that's a big one. After we do all this stuff, like that's one of my favorite ones right there. But right after you do that one, it's a good idea to stretch the hip, like right away. So that one followed by the kneeling hip stretch uh, with the band is like it's like magic for people with tight hips who have any issues. So. If you were to stretch that, but that's like, they give me one stretch to do, it would be this one. Put that so as release followed by this hip stretch. I like to use the bands. The bands actually give a little traction on the hip, and they actually bring your, your stretch to like the next level. Right, get the hip, get the band up high on the hip. It's actually a little bit too far. Toe on the now move out. Toe on the floor, right? So now what this is doing is this is just kind of traction my hip a little bit. It's gonna give me a little it's gonna, it's gonna give me a better stretch. Now the whole idea here is to contract that glute right there. Sometimes that sometimes just sitting here is enough for people. Some people are so tight that they can't even track their hips. 
so that you just let them sit here for a little while, right? And then and that's, sometimes they even have to hold on, so people just can't even get into this position. So sometimes you can, you know, even eliminate the band. But then you really want to try to contract the hip. And you're going to have to breathe through it because it's not going to be very comfortable. And then the next level for that would just be reaching high and reaching over at the same time. And just breathing through that stretch. So you can actually get some bands and hook them up to the, to the rack. Right? And give that a try. Come on, jump right in there. Fast. Don't be shy. Who else? <laughs> you guys can share hands. There's some thick racks. The thin ones aren't really that good for this, but you got the thick ones over here. Grab that. Grab some. There's another bench right there. So if you want to grab that bench. Try that, try that so as release with a pencil. There you go. With that, you could, but you really want your leg kind of hang down. Yeah. But also get the higher to it. Yeah, like right on the inside. Yeah, let that. And then you want to use the other leg on the yeah. Get that hand higher. The leg that's in the band? Yeah. Right there, like that. I feel like it's like all my mom's. You've got to take us to your spot. Now reach high with the right arm. Now reach over. Now squeeze your glute. <laughs> so after you guys do all that, after you do all that foam roll and stuff, with that, there you go. Try to try to try to squeeze your butt cheek on the right side. Hmm? Yes, right on the inside of that, that head. No. Now move the knee. Move the leg up and down. Yeah. <laughs> and find, you can roll it around in there, Robin, and just find those spots. And breathe through it. But a combination of this, the hip stretch, and then some activation afterwards. So that's special. I kind of have some separated down there. So you want to you want to release the, the fascia. Then you want to move, right? You want to move. You want to want to do some some mobility work. Then after that, we want we want muscle activation. So we want to, we want to activate the glutes, right? That's the opposing muscle group. So you want to, so after something like this, and you just hit bridges, right? So a combination of this, that, and some hip bridges. That's like the trifecta right there. And then you can go into your, you know, then you kind of swings, and you, you feel like you're gonna explode. Your hips are nice and loose, your head is flying. Yeah, magical. It's magical. Mike, does that have to be done on a bend, like an elevated surface when you do the. If you don't, I mean, it's better because. You can actually think you can move the leg, you can let the leg, you can, you can extend a little bit more, get a little stretch on there. Yeah, that's where you're going to feel it. Yep, it gets a nice tension on the band. And get that, and get that, this is out of front of you. Yeah, and stand as tall. Now contract that glute. Now reach the left arm. Good. Now you reach over a little bit. There you go. Keep contracting that glute. There you go. There you go. Come on, for 30 seconds. I usually I, I like, like three breaths. Three good breaths. And each time you exhale, try to let it stretch a little bit more. So it's kind of like a 
like relax it, just, it just stretch a little bit. So you take a, take a nice deep breath, exhale, and then just and just let it stretch a little bit more. Bridge up. Yep. Hip bridges. All right. Hip bridges. Contract the glutes. Contract the lats. Activate those muscles. So yeah, time of day. I think if I really squeeze the glute tight, yeah, there you go. Breathe. Top of the hip, go right, lead side, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Get a deep breath. Yeah. 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 And then you some light with some hip on the tail. Up and down. This works even better on a, on a, even a higher bench because then you can let, let your leg yeah. come out of yeah. the stretch. Yeah. 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 I have it. At my school, I have it those treatment tables and I need to do it on that. Yeah. They don't know what that's going on over there. I'm going to do this in my office. Like, oh, I'm good now. I feel good. Yeah. yeah, that's that one's a home run right there. That's a home run. Um, so yeah, the combination of that, of that with the band, that hip stretch. The band, you don't even, I mean, if you don't have a band, it's fine. You just do the hip stretch without a band. That band just adds a little more, like some traction to the hip. It just gives you a little bit better stretch. Yeah, let's like hang down. See, I'm good. Right on the inside of the hole, right there. Get this cut about a little bit. Two hands. Good. Just let it sink in there. You can apply a little pressure too, cut it out. And now we're going to move your knee up and down. And then you can move this around in different spots too. I'm going to show you guys another. I'm going to show you another hip stretch. Of course, always, always do both sides. Yeah. I'm going to show you another hip stretch too. And then what's more of an adductor stretch with the band. It's hard to pick this up. Everybody's tighten the hips up. Watch this one. This is um, something I just learned from my friend Smitty. <laughs> right, so find a spot on the wall, right? So did you see how I did that? No. So maybe like a one inch band, this one's a little bit a little bit um, thinner. So just kind of pull around your back to the band. Slip one around one knee. Slip the other around the other knee. Get close to the wall. Not too close. It's going to be good for everybody. The band's actually just going to give you a little, little assistance, resistance. Just kind of walk your hands out. Or walk your feet out as far as you can. This is an adductor stretch. Just kind of keep walking the feet and heels out. This is great stretch to do before you do squats. All right? Just keep walking them out. Keep walking them out. As far as you can. I'm just gonna hold. Keep try to keep your lower back pressed against the floor. Try not to let it arch up. And just keep breathing. You can actually use your hands to kind of help too. Alright. Welcome back in. Alright. You can also do that without the bands too. You can also use bands. When you're doing this, this like crying goblet squat movement too. The thicker bands are actually better. They're gonna give you a little, a little more, a little more, a little more pull. But that's a great stretch for the adductors and hips. Before you, you know, if you're doing squats that day, you can do it at home. Okay? If you have walls in your house. Everybody's got walls up. <laughs> but give that a try. You don't mind. And there's a lot you can do with bands. You can also. 
Set two bands up. Another great head stretch too. You would set two bands up on the rack. I'm gonna have two different size bands here. And you can kind of get your get these up on your hips. I mean, a lot of this stuff looks ridiculous, but kind of get into your squat. Gives you that traction on your hips, right? And just sit, sit there and just let the bands kind of pull that. Cut out from the wall or he got shot. This is the green one. This is this this is this endless. The crap you can do. It's just endless. Um, let's see. What else? I have a whole bunch of stuff for you guys. Um, let's see here. So after we do all the biofashion release stuff, right, we do the mobility stuff, right, biofashion release stuff, and then we do, so I'm going to take you guys to like a, why don't you grab a, like a lighter kettlebell from the, from the shelf. I'm just going to kind of take you through like a little mobility thing, body weight kettlebell mobility thing, nothing, nothing tactical for you doing snatches or anything like that. How light are you talking? 12 kilo, 20 pounds, 15, whatever. It doesn't have to be really anything significant. This one's not, I probably want a little more tension on the band than this, but this is a good way to, to do your hamstring stretch. Just a couple seconds, you know, you can, I like to do like a, like an active isolated type stretching just with like a two second hold and then like a two second release. But that's just a good way of using bands to stretch the hamstrings out. All right, there's something else to have in your arsenal. All right, so I'll just grab the kettle up for myself. So after we do all that mobility stuff, right, just to save time, I just like to flow through the mobility work, right? So the good way to do that is just to do like a like a what we call a flow. So just kind of bring the kettle up, right? Grab the hands. You can just sit back and do a squat. Keep your elbows inside, right? So this is called a prime goblet squat. You're, you're pushing your elbows into your knees. You're opening up your hips, okay? And you're staying tall. Chest is up. From there, you're gonna lower the bell to the floor, right? Now from here, you're gonna stand up. You're gonna straighten the legs out, right? So I'm gonna call this a squat stand, right? Now you're gonna go back and do squat. You're gonna curl back up. Right, then you're gonna lower back down. So I'd say do about like I would do like five of these. 
Right, so we do our five. Always pushing those elbows in. All right, opening up those hips, heels are down. Right, stand back up. Try to put the bell back by your heels. That's going to give you a little more hamstring stretch. And if you don't have that kind of flexibility, you can always like kind of lift the handle up a little bit. All right, squat, curl, chest up, knees out. So now from here, I'm going to let go of the bell, right? Now I'm going to stand. I'm going to walk my hands out. Now from here, I'm going to push my position, right? But I'm not going to do a push-up. What I'm going to do is what, what's called a push-up plus. It's just moving from your shoulder, from your scapula. You're not bending your elbows at all, right? You're going to kind of pinch your shoulder blades together and then push them out, all right? So this is a nice little shoulder mobility drill. So you'll do like, I would say just do five of those, right? So after you do your five, right, you're gonna walk it back in. And then you'll do your squat stand again. So we won't go through the, so you'll do your squat stand, curl, walk it out. Scat push ups, all right? So I'll do like three sets of those. And then we'll move on to the next one, which would be, let's see. Throw a little stuff down for you. Okay, you know what? Let's, let's just quickly all that. So, let's do those again. So, bring it down. I have it down. Okay, bring it down to the feet. Stand up. Now, walk it out. We'll just do one, we'll do five scat push ups, right? Five push up pluses. Do your five. After you do your five, bring your left foot up to the left hand, like that. All right, so you're in a, like a starter position. Now we'll reach high with the, with the left hand. You know, keep reach high with the right hand. Then you'll switch sides. Bring the work, bring the right foot up, reach the right. And twist, so you're looking up with your hand. Reach the left. Sorry. Good, bring your foot back. Walk it back in. Now you're going to bring the bell up to your chest, but you're going to have the bottom facing up. We're going to do what's called a halo. So the whole idea is to tight circles around the head with your kettlebell. See what I did that? Without bonking yourself in the head with it. So tight circles around the head, it's a nice shoulder mobility drill. Try to keep them nice and tight around the head. So you do, I would do like five each side. So bottom up, bottom down, bottom up, bottom down. It's easier with the smaller belts to, to do these. With the steel belts, rather than those. Uh, yeah. This is easier to hold on to the handles. So from there, I usually put it down. And I'll do like 10 kettlebell swings, but we're not we won't be able to do that right now. So that's kind of like a flow, right? Start with a squat, stand, curl, walking out, push-ups, foot up, reach, reach, other side, okay, walk back up, halos, swings, and then do the whole thing again. Right? That's a nice little mobility slash warm-up, right? Gets everything going at the same time. Um we'll do that like three times, right? Feel your Myofascial stuff. I mean, this is even a good something to do on the days that you're not training. You know, if you're not, it's like a recovery day. You know, just to do, yeah, rather than nothing. You know, if you're off, you just want to come to the gym and do it and just mess around. You know, so that sometimes you go to the gym and you don't really feel like doing anything. But just. Right. <laughs> but this is it's something good to do to help with your with your recovery. You know? It's also a good warm up. Um let's see. What else? Um oh. shoulder more shoulder mobility stuff, right? So again with the bands. So if we go Like 
right? So after we, after you do all that stuff with the lacrosse ball on the rack against the you know wall or on that pole, so good shoulder mobility stuff. Just kind of grab the band, around, just let it go, just bring it around your wrist and just kind of so you don't have to really hold on to it. You can actually let your hand relax, get the extension of your your arm, and just kind of look the opposite way. Right, and then you can also go the other way with it. That's the last stretch right here. That you can also use some you know, protraction or retraction there too. You just basically just and always breathe. All right, when you're stretching, take a nice belly breath, exhale, and try to and try to let it go a little bit further each time. Right, so here. And try to relax. Every time you exhale, just try to relax a little bit and roll a little bit further. Right? So you just can just kind of flow through those movements. You can just do a twist. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can you can do with the band tied around the rack for your shoulder. Alright? So anybody want to try that? And all you. I know Mike will uh, travel from uh, so this way, or would you travel from like? Oh, more strength. Yeah. Yeah, so reach out. Go on. Yeah, let's not just here, watch. One more extension here, I'll go. Oh, kind of the back a little bit. Yeah, you can, yeah, just keep doing the your elbow and just look the opposite direction. Yeah, just put that on your wrist. Do not pull out of it. There it is. It's a quiet one. <laughs> <laughs> How does that feel? Alright? It feels like yeah. a lot in the pack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got all your shirt. Yeah, the cross, right, last stretch here. Just let your arm relax. Yeah, there you go. Do a protraction, retraction. There you go, there you go, right? Just let it, yeah, just let it relax that. Just bring it So, okay, kind of like this. You don't have to hold on to it. You just let your hand relax. And just, yeah, now grab, grab it kind of with your hand, Chris. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, just keep your hand relaxed. You don't have to hold on to it. There you go, just let the hand there. And I'll look the other way. I don't look up, stay tall. Stay tall. Stay tall. Yeah. Yeah, look at away. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So trying to go around to it this way. You just fish your wrist through. And just. Uh. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. Turn, turn it to Yeah, and just put it in the There you go. So Feeling, you know, the quad start to work a little bit. Get the fire. 
Yeah, you want to press the heel down. You don't have it. You can come yeah, up when you bend your knee. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So those are pretty, those are like my favorites that I like to do and that I think you benefit from the most. But actually, if you guys, I'm recording this, and I'll send you the link if you want to watch some of this stuff. So if you, if you don't remember a lot of it, okay? okay it's going to be a, it's a, it's on my YouTube channel, but I'll send you the. I'll send you the link to remind you if you want to like go through it. Learn Mars energy. You need to watch yourself on that flight. Mars kind of living. Yeah, we're in the middle of it. Yeah, this is actually a very nice city. Moving up to the My friend Smith, when I was like, no, they're great. Yeah, I'm a lot of time. a good way to save time. How long did you do it? So you live yeah, I think that here. Yeah. You guys have any? You guys have any questions about anything? Anybody want to see anything that I didn't show you? Um, the only thing I think is would be the. Um, Last wall, top wall. And then when you're done with that, you just do a lot of like, stretching. Of, you know what I mean? Like pulling your toes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. 